I think real quick, we have a little bit of time uh, to go over the uh, uh, talk a little bit about the uh, Cardinal Killer. It. Uh, let me see where we talked about it. I forgot to uh, write it down. Uh, actually, no, I think I did break it. Okay, yeah. Uh, so in my original profile, uh, I said at first I thought he was going he would be a black male in his late 30s or 25 to 35. All right, let me correct myself. I'm uh, getting a little bit buzzed on this amaretto, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, all right, so in my original profile, I said he was likely a white male, 25 to 35 years old. Um, but then after speaking with my criminology instructor, um, I changed it to late 30s because she thought he it was likely late 30s. Uh, and then after we found out that there, there were more black victims than white victims, I changed it to that he was likely a black male. Uh, I thought he was likely reserve military, low-level army uh, with a Napoleon content, complex. Uh, didn't really stand out. Uh, juvenile arsonist. Uh, worked for a municipality. Below average IQ. Below average height and weight. Kept to himself. Uh, convenience killer. Uh, possibly filmed the attacks. Uh, would communicate with authorities. Uh, he was a disorganized killer. And likely adopted or lived in foster care and raised by uh, or raised by an alternate family member. Uh, what they found, the suspect that they have in custody, the they found uh, forty caliber rounds that matched those in the bodies, um, linked all all the homicides, even some in Kansas, which I think we did talk about. What wasn't it, Kansas? Yeah. Uh, Ohio. Ohio. Okay. We're looking at. Okay. So, and they think there might be more too that he killed, but it's Perez Reed. He's a 25 year old uh, black male, has a history of mental illness, uh, history history of arson. Uh, he was going through a divorce um, in 2020. Still going through a divorce because. I guess there was failure to appear or something like that. Oh, there's a stressor right there. Yeah. Um, so he set his ex soon to be ex wife's car on fire. Uh, he also set his family's house on fire with his family inside. Uh, it was his cousin, uh, his grandma, and his father were all inside the house. Uh, mm -hmm. At first, they decided they were going to press charges. But then they stopped cooperating with police, which is why he didn't serve uh, 10 to 15 years in prison. Uh, and this was all happened before these murders took place. Uh, he was raised by his cousin since age eight because his parents were unfit. Uh, the arson took place at 20 years old. So... We got, we, we got the biggest part of the profile accurate, the psychological part. It was just the other stuff that we got inaccurate. He, uh, we don't, uh, there's no evidence that says he was in the military or worked for a municipality. In fact, uh, it seems that he was a career offender. And he... He wasn't. Uh, he didn't really keep to himself by evidence of the uh, per, uh, mental disorders, and I said he didn't stand out, but that's clearly incorrect because of the crescent moon tattoo he has right, right between his eyes, almost. Um, but the other stuff we got accurate, so. 
There you go. What are you guys' it, thoughts on that? We're not professionals. We had fun with it. Exactly. We saw it. We discussed it. Uh, yeah. You know, who knows? Maybe somebody down there had seen it and went, "Oh, hey, here's an idea." Yeah. <laughs> Which would be yeah, awesome. you never but, know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. But, it is our right now. It is our most popular video on YouTube. So. Cool. Hmm. But uh, you know, if just once we hear a news article that says Cardinal Killer caught. <laughs> but we know it was our video that got right, out there. yeah that'd be incredible if we saw the cardinal killer finally caught amazing <laughs> i'll be honest with you i think uh with with the research that i've been doing for for uh the book that we want to work on shannon the i'd be really fascinated to learn about this guy's first eight years of life oh you know, absolutely if his parents were unfit and found unfit at the time that he was eight what was his life like prior to when he was given to his cousin to, to take care of him? Um, I, I mean, we're probably looking at a textbook uh, abuse situation, neglect situation, non-attachment situation, which clearly shows in his crimes, right? Right. And psychologist Eric Erickson uh, actually developed a theory around um, the different stages of our lives. And the, uh, the crises that we undergo during these different points of our lives. Um, there's like, uh, let's see here. I, I had it here at one point. I think I tore it down. Uh, but it was like acceptance versus uh, unacceptance or uh anyway look up eric erickson let me bring it up on here oh, real fascinating quick. he's a good read yeah i can't like i said i can't really think of it right now i'm getting a little buzzed on this hammerettos <laughs> no worries <laughs> erickson stages all right so uh, stage one is trust versus mistrust, and then uh, autonomy versus shame and doubt, initiative versus guilt, uh, industry versus inferiority, identity versus confusion, intimacy versus isolation. And then the last two stages have to deal with uh, late, later in life. Um, but let me share my screen with you guys real quick. Uh, as we can see here, uh, early childhood or infancy is, is where it begins. It's trust versus mistrust. This is where uh, attachment disorders are likely to develop. Uh, if the infant learns to mistrust their caregiver, uh, they're going to develop uh, attachment disorders. Uh, and then in her early childhood uh, is where it continues. Uh, autonomy versus shame and doubt. This is where like uh, they aren't supposed to uh, I can't really think of it right they're now. not really supposed to feel that what's interesting about that one is the most important word there from what I've learned is the shame yeah uh, picking out her clothes yeah. and dressing herself uh, so not not really not really being uh, allowed to do that stuff on your own and when you uh, do it or you do it wrong it's it's corporal punishment or you know just shame heaped upon you exactly uh and then we have in, uh, initiative versus guilt which is a continuance of that uh industry industry versus inferiority um a lot of school age kids go through this this time of bullying and uh ridicule even by teachers yep uh identity versus role confusion all of this has an interact a uh, it has an impact on our psyches and makes us who we are uh, which is why uh, psychological uh, disorders can't really be uh, diagnosed until after the age of 25 and here uh, which is uh, young adulthood intimacy versus isolation 
Uh, middle adulthood is right. It starts uh, about <laughs> 25, 30 years old. Uh, and then you go into, you know, uh, integrity versus despair, which is end of life type stuff. Very interesting stuff. I, I enjoy reading Erickson's work. It's fascinating. Uh, but for our viewers, if you get a chance, check it out. Uh, mm -hmm. It could tell you a lot about the uh, minds of the serial killer and why they do the things they do. Likely because at one point they moved in the negative direction during those crises. Yep. So do you guys have anything more to add on this uh, before we call it quits for tonight? No, I would be curious though. And I think it would be interesting and maybe fun. I don't know, but to go down and actually interview him. Yeah. Well, that would be and, fascinating. You know, get, get it straight from him. What went on, why he did it or well, I guess we can't say that he did it yet. <laughs> for, my, for my intro to allegedly, <laughs> for my intro to corrections final paper this semester, I had the option of interviewing a person on death row, and there is a serial killer in California uh, who is on death row right now uh, for murdering. Uh, uh, four prostitutes and he actually turned himself in with the severed breast of one of them in his pocket that I wanted to interview but I don't think I would really have enough time between now and the end of the semester to get approval to interview him uh, via phone really wow. yeah so it's going to have to become one of those things where if I write more true crime books I'll just have to interview uh interview that way yeah <laughs> so cool but yeah to me that that would just be awesome uh i remember oh what's his name the oklahoma city bomber i can't think of his name now timothy mcveigh mcveigh yeah. uh i went down to the Terre Haute prison where he was at and just driving past that place was so creepy so Eerie. Right. Just knowing that he's on the other side of that wall. Totally. totally. <laughs> it's one and, of those feelings like it's hard to shake, but you'll remember it forever. Yeah, and I what's guess. funny is Timothy McVeigh and Ted Kaczynski were in the same prison uh, on the same block at the same time. Yeah, it, wow. man, it, it is it is an eerie feeling going past there. And we went past there at night. And yes, we stopped, even though the sign said don't. We left pretty quickly afterwards, but <laughs> I, I, <laughs> uh, yeah, man, that that was. I don't think I'll ever forget driving past that prison. No, I wouldn't. I, you know, like I said, I think it was like one o'clock in the morning when we were down there too. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm S. M. Cornthwaite. There's a creepy new book series out for the young one in your life, or the young at heart. Check out Hollow Screams Day of the Dolls and Hollow Screams Ghost House, now available on Amazon. Read them together. These tales are thrillers. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.